morning everybody. I'm uh, going to read to you this morning from the book of Matthew chapter 26 verses 1 to 13 and this is the message version. When Jesus finished saying these things he told his disciples, you know that Passover comes in two days? Well that's when the Son of Man will be betrayed and handed over for crucifixion. At that very moment, the party of high priests and religious leaders was meeting in the chambers of the chief priest named Caiaphas, conspiring to seize Jesus by stealth and kill him. They agreed that it should not be done during Passover week. We don't want a riot on our hands, they said. When Jesus was at Bethany, a guest of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him as he was eating dinner and anointed him with a bottle of very expensive perfume. When the disciples saw what was happening, they were furious. That's criminal. This could have been sold for a lot of money and handed out to the poor. Well, when Jesus realised what was going on, he intervened. Why are you giving this woman a hard time? She has just done something wonderfully significant for me. You will have the poor with you every day for the rest of your lives, but not me. When she poured this perfume on my body, what she really did was anoint me for burial. And you can be sure that wherever in the whole world the message is preached, what she has just done is going to be remembered and admired. Thank you, Anne. Now, today's story reminds us that at the heart of Christianity is not a set of beliefs, beliefs came later, but rather a set of events of things which happened. And today's story is particularly beautiful. And it's also a, a story, I think, rich in contrasts. And I guess the first contrast is about the location. I remember some years ago uh, going to visit a, a very attractive villa by a lakeside in a suburb of Berlin called Wannsee. And uh, the villa is now a memorial and a museum. And the reason for that, that that villa, in its beautiful surroundings, was the setting in January 1942 for a meeting of the top brass of the Third Reich when they um, finalised the final solution for the Jewish people. So it's a place of great infamy. And, uh, you know, that reminded me that, um, you know, when the when the powerful gather together to discuss murder, uh, they nevertheless choose attractive and comfortable surroundings. And so the chief priests and uh, the other rulers of the people are in a very nice palace making their plans to murder Jesus. But the centre of our action is not in the palace, it's with a, a much more modest house, the house of Simon the leper. Uh, where Jesus is having dinner with his friends. And a woman comes in and anoints him with a very expensive perfume. Um, it's surely a, a beautiful act. But not everyone is impressed by any means. And uh, one of the other contrasts in the story is the contrast between the woman's action and the disciples' reaction to that. Um, the woman doesn't say anything. She opens the bottle and uh, anoints Jesus. And this, uh, I guess, reminds us of how important women were in the story of Christianity. It is women who have the leading roles in the Christmas story, Mary especially, but also um, Elizabeth. It is uh, women who are, have the first place in the resurrection story. And here in Passion Week, it is a woman who prepares the way for the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And uh, she is, I guess, 
a living illustration of the greatest commandment, the commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And there, there could hardly be a more beautiful illustration than the one that we've read about. Um, and I guess uh, there's something there for us about, you know, never mind if others tut or complain or look down their noses at you. Um, your duty is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. Now go and do it boldly. Now, in contrast to that, the disciples' reaction is negative and critical. Why the waste? Why the cost? And perhaps one senses they're also questioning her emotional stability. And, um, you know, they get things so wrong. Uh, but you know, I bet they weren't expecting Jesus' reaction. They didn't expect Jesus to take sides with the woman. After all, um, you know, no one was more strenuous in their efforts on behalf of the poor than Jesus was. Only a short time previously in the parable of the sheep and the goats, he'd been telling them that um, those who are admitted to the kingdom are those who feed the poor. And Jesus wasn't the kind of guy who would enjoy being splashed all over with cologne. Um, so I guess they were caught on the hop by Jesus' reaction. So, so why does Jesus take sides and why did he take the woman's side? Well, I think there are a number of reasons for that. I think the first reason is that, you know, the disciples are thinking about the absent poor, the poor in general. They're thinking about the cause, concern for the poor and needy. What they're not thinking about is the poor woman in front of them and her hurt and her pain. Um, but Jesus is thinking of that person. He is thinking of the human being in front of him, uh, the person who is now subject to criticism. Um, and I guess there's a huge lesson for us in that is, you know, uh, be careful when you're irritated with someone on your team or someone in your household or somebody close to you. Judge not, lest you be judged. You know, it's easy to be um, on the side of the poor and needy in general, but to lose sight of the individual who is actually in our life in some way. Well, you know, if the woman illustrates the greatest command, the commandment to love God um, with all our heart and soul and mind, then Jesus surely illustrates the second command to love your neighbor as yourself. And he is um, by her side in an instant when she is exposed to criticism and blame. And he backs her up and tells the disciples to back off. But let's look at a little bit more detail at some of the things that Jesus says. First, he says that you will always have the poor with you. That's actually a quotation from Deuteronomy 15 at verse 11. And if you read the whole of that verse, you, you know it says, you'll always have the poor and needy with you. So, you know, go on caring for them. So we can't use what Jesus said as an excuse to kind of cut back on our generosity or care for the poor. That's not the point that Jesus is making. Uh, the point he's making is about care for the individual human being right now in front of us and not simply the cause of caring for the poor and needy. Next, Jesus said, she has prepared my body for burial. Now, I doubt if the woman or anybody else in the room had realized that that's what was going on. And, um, you know, she is remarkable. This is the prophet who doesn't say anything and who doesn't realize what they're doing. But nevertheless, her actions speak a beautiful prophecy over Jesus. And I wonder too, if there's something here about our father communicating something to the son in this. When this happens, does Jesus realize from his father that the end is now close at hand. Next, Jesus says that what she has done um, will be told in memory of her wherever the gospel is preached. And that's a, a tremendous prophecy in itself. And we're, we're living, breathing truth of that today. As I'm speaking to you and you're listening, we are fulfilling that prophecy. 
But I don't think this is just about the woman. I think this is also saying that, you know, when you love God, when you love God boldly, then Jesus is very aware of that. That is something beautiful in his eyes. It's not lost. Other people may have sneered. But for Jesus, it's precious. Your obedience is beautiful to him. Let me finish, uh, not with a prayer, but actually with reading a blessing. And if I can just lay my hands on this in a second. Then the Lord said to Moses, this is from number six, tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with this special blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, I myself will bless them. Receive his blessing.